And uh, we have lots to be thankful for. Uh, the beautiful fall colors, the fall weather, the harvest that is happening. And we've had a baby last week and we had a wedding yesterday. So there's so many things that we are thankful for. Um, I wanted to uh, welcome everyone. And we have coffee after church for those that uh, are still around. For announcements, Bernice has an announcement. morning it's time again for our um, drive operation sharing drive fall drive that we have and you've seen the notice up at the top there um, so um, we're gonna be looking for personal hygiene and cleaning supplies but also winter clothing so uh, you're welcome to drop them off here on the Saturday October 22nd or take them to church on the 23rd a new initiative that we're really trying to do this year is to do a Your Neighborhood Operation Sharing Drive. So if you and your family would like to hold a drive in your own neighborhood, um, we've made it easy for you. We have a template uh, where a letter that you can either have photocopied or you can post it on your Facebook page or you can send it out to all your neighbors and then um, you can hold your own drive for the week of October 15 to 22nd. And what we suggest you do is then next week you would hand out all these letters um, or send them by Facebook and then put a bin on your front porch perhaps so people can drop off their um, donations and throw them in the bin. And then you collect, the bin, collect them all and then bring them to the church and uh, we'll make sure it gets to Operation Sherry. So just hoping that um, we can all grow and learn and serve and just show Christ's love in this way in the neighborhood.
morning and welcome. Our God calls us to worship. We've come to worship God who makes streams flow from rock, who turns the parched earth into springs of living water, who sends the rain from heaven and makes the wilderness blossom and flourish. As the deer thirsts for flowing streams, so we thirst for you, O God. Come, let us worship our life-giving God who pours out living water on all who thirst. This life-giving, life-sustaining, and life-renewing God greets us this morning with these words. To the church of God in Woodstock, to those sanctified and in Christ Jesus and called to be holy, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And all God's people say, Amen.
like to have the kids come forward to have a blessing for, for you guys, and then you can go off to Sunday school after the song, actually. Are the kids doing some actions or something, or no? Okay. Morning. How are you? Hi. Florence, how's it going? We've got a small crew today, hey? That's okay. All right, I'm going to have a blessing for you guys, and then, we're gonna, then you guys can go back to your seats, and then we'll, once that song's done, then you guys can go off to Sunday school, okay? So God, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And all God's people say? Amen. Amen. All right, guys, you can go back to your seats, and then after the song, you can go to Sunday school. God reconciles himself to us. Please join me in a prayer of confession. Lord Jesus Christ, we, we, we remember with gratitude those people who generously sowed the seeds of faith in our lives. Above all, we recognize how you have blessed our lives with the gift of your Holy Spirit so that our faith has miraculously and mysteriously grown. We confess the times, though, that we fail to involve ourselves in planting any seeds of faith in the lives of others. The times when our personal agendas become more important than yours and your kingdom. The times when we have denied others the opportunity to expand their faith through our lack of interest or involvement. The times when our lives become so entangled with the values of this world that we forget what you have said, what you have done, and what you have promised in your holy word. Lord Jesus, we know that when we become disconnected from you, our lives become parched and unfruitful, and our faith becomes stunted and dry. So, Lord, 
forgive us. Bless and renew our lives, we pray, so that we remain connected to you at all times and in all places, strengthening our faith and bearing the fruit of your mercy, your love, and your undying life. We pray all of this in the name of Christ, our hope in life and death. Amen. bow your heads for the prayer of illumination. Guide us, O God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find wisdom, and in your will discover your peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our reading this morning is from Revelations 21, verses 1 to 8. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, 
coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the, from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will, inher will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. This is the word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, have you ever had a major life experience where you thought to yourself, hey, now this is something really new. This is a whole new world opening up. Maybe it was your wedding day. Maybe the birth of a child. Or how about the, the full recovery from a long and life-threatening illness? Or what about someone new coming to live with you? Well, these are the very images that John, the author of Revelation, uses as he paints this breathtaking picture of the new heaven and new earth. And notice what all these images have in common. They are all about relationship. We can't fail to notice how impressive and far-reaching is the theology of relationship as taught in this vision. I saw the holy city, the, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. The New Jerusalem is not described, first of all, as a geographical phenomenon, but as a bride. This is the most intimate relationship language of all. There is a tenderness and a joyousness in the wedding day image. This symbol is to become our very first impression of God's new order. Now, God could have shown John some majestic new fields and forests. He could have first showed John those streets paved in gold. But God didn't do that, did he? First and foremost, God shows John a beloved bride, a bride and her husband. God is like a proud mother and father showing off the newly married couple to the wedding guests. But wait a minute. This is not your typical wedding because the wedding guests are angels and we, the church, are the bride. All those who have put their trust in God the Son are right there in that image. This relationship is central in God's eternal new order. Everything else is secondary. We just started our Bible study called Unshakable Hope, and I encourage you to join us on Monday evenings here at the church or at your home via Zoom. And on our first night, we reflected on humanity's importance and worth because we are created in the image of God. And we struggled with that reality. 
We struggled with the knowledge that we are so important to God. Many of us have a hard time believing that we are that valuable, that precious. And this vision here in Revelation is far grander than the reality that we are God's own image bearers. In the new creation, we are not only redeemed image bearers, we are the unblemished, beautiful bride of Christ. It's hard to fathom, I know. And I think it's the the weight of glory that C.S. Lewis speaks of. Now, in our Bible study, we also talked a little bit about why it is we have such a deprecating view of ourselves. Was it the doctrine of total depravity that we heard so often growing up? Maybe our pastors and our Bible teachers spent much more time focusing on verses like verse 8 of our text than they did the first seven verses. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur, the second death. We're not going to dig into this list this morning, but suffice it to say that there are some who will not put their trust in God's greatest gift, his son, and their destiny is eternal separation from God. That is a vision too horrible to even imagine. And since this list is not meant for God's children, it must be a warning to those who have not yet put their trust in Jesus Christ, which means that there is still hope. So if you have not yet put your trust in him, keep listening. Because this God of justice who will not let sin go unpunished is also a very tender and loving Father who wishes that none would be lost. We know that because God has graciously provided a way for us, a way home. And it's only through His Son, Jesus Christ, there is no plan B. Plan A is Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega. There's no other way to get back home than through Jesus. And to all who put their faith in Jesus, this next image is for you. A new birth. A new beginning. Check out verse 7. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Now, here's the thing about God's kingdom that is completely different than the kingdoms of the world. To be victorious in God's kingdom is not to be the strongest and the smartest. It's not about being mighty in battle. It's quite the opposite. To be victorious in God's kingdom, we need to become like a little child. We need to recognize our weakness, to see our need for a Savior, to put up the white flag of surrender. I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Now, if you think that surrender means that you are some kind of failure or weakling, think again. Because the moment that we recognize our need for God's greatest gift, our need for Jesus Christ, the moment we say, I'm done trying to do it all on my own and give it over to him, that's the moment we are reborn. We are finally thinking clearly. 
The image of God in us is getting clearer, and we are more human than we've ever been at that time. Brothers and sisters, I know that the world teaches us to be strong and independent. But in the kingdom, the strong are those who recognize their weakness and limitations and depend on God for daily help. They are not afraid to ask for help. And they also see when others are in need. That's what true humanity looks like. Oh, and by the way, with God at our side, with with God in us, when our dad really is the strongest and the smartest and the most powerful by a long shot, who or what can be against us? Who or what can be against us? Now, for anyone who has been born again, You know that the Christian life is not at all a walk in the park at that point. Being a child of God in a world that is either indifferent to him or hates him is not easy. And even though we experience resurrection of spirits, our bodies are still breaking down. We still experience a whole lot of crying and mourning, of suffering and death. But God knows that. And he promises to be right there with us. But God also gives us another comforting image in this text. Check it out in verse 4. See the image of the great recovery And hear these wonderfully comforting words. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. No more. No more lupus. No more seizures. No more dementia. No more anxiety. No more depression. No more heart disease. No more car accidents, comas, covid or cancer, no more fires, floods, and famines, no more wars or rumors of wars. All those will have passed away. We can turn our back on all those things. And speaking of backs turned for those who don't recognize that family in the picture, it's Ryan and Erica and it's Emily and Jackson. They and we have been witness to a great recovery in Ryan's life. We praise Almighty God for this. But as Ryan or Erica or the family will tell you, there are still plenty of challenges to overcome. Still lots of depending on God for help and hope and healing and strength. There are still times of mourning and crying and pain. That is true of Ryan and Erica's journey and is true for all of us as well. But that's where faith and hope kick in. Now faith, as Hebrews tells us, is confidence in what we hope for and it's assurance about what we do not see. And it's our hope in this bodily resurrection, our greatest, it's our, for our greatest and most complete recovery that is like an anchor to the soul, firm and secure. We all long for that complete recovery, don't we? We all long for the day when there will be no more death or mourning, or crying, or pain. But we can have assurance, a blessed assurance already now because of that final image in our text, that new permanent guest that has moved in 
with us. The one who is making all things new and right and beautiful again. Brothers and sisters, be assured of this. God himself is with us. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people. And he will dwell with them. They will be his people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. Central to all these images. Central to this whole picture. And indeed explaining what it all means is the great promise. God has come to dwell with humans. God is the new permanent guest. He is coming to live forever in our midst. A healing, comforting, celebrating presence. The center of the the picture is not the new world itself, but the one true God who made the first creation and loved it so much that he sent the Lamb of God to redeem and to renew it. Now, brothers and sisters, maybe we're still struggling with the, with the holiness of God and the wrath of God against sin. Maybe we still see ourselves in some of those characters mentioned in verse 8, the cowardly and murderers, the sexually immoral, the idolaters, and liars. We as Christians can still struggle with all sorts of sin. But the difference between born-again Christians and those who are on this list is repentance. True Christians can wander far away from God. We can, en- get, we can get entangled in some pretty nasty stuff. But a child of God will also put up the white flag of surrender. And God will take that white flag, plunge it in the blood of Jesus, and remind us whose blood covers us. Brothers and sisters, we should feel some shame when we sin against our God. But when our lives are characterized by repentance, faith and hope, we know that we are not a part of those listed in verse 8. And we need to be reminded of this other image of God in our text today. Up until now, in this whole book of Revelation, the one who sits on the throne has been mentioned only obliquely. He has been there, he has been worshipped, but all the talking has been done by Jesus or by an angel or by a voice out of heaven. Now at last, for the first time since the opening statement in Revelation 1 verse 8, God himself addresses John and through him addresses the seven churches and our church. God addresses Covenant Church today. This personal address by God himself, it seems, is part of the newness. Just as in verse 4, God himself will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Can you see the tenderness of a mother or a father in God right there? This wiping away of tears is a parental act of utter gentleness and kindness. Remember who it is that's doing it. It's not some junior or even senior heavenly official. It is God himself. God will wipe away all of our tears. That's a loving God image right there. 
Yes, our dad is a great and mighty judge, and justice will be served. But for us, dad has sent Jesus to take our punishment. Dad has sent Jesus to get his image bearers back. Dad sent Jesus to get his children to their forever home. And that forever home is right here on planet Earth. The closing scene of Scripture is not a a vision of people going up into heaven as some believe. This image is the new Jerusalem itself coming down from heaven to the earth. Now, if we think about it, that's kind of shocking, isn't it? Because if the new Jerusalem is the bride of the Lamb, and the bride of the Lamb consists of the people of God, how are we already in heaven when we're down here on the earth? The clue here is revealed by God through Paul. In Colossians 3, verse 3. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When somebody belongs to Jesus, they continue with their life here on earth, but they have a secret life as well, a fresh gift from God which becomes part of a hidden reality that will be revealed in the last day. Talk about assurance, brothers and sisters. Whatever we're going through right now, can you see yourself in the future? Can you see yourself in in those great multitudes, too many to count in Revelation 5, 7, and 19? We who believe are already in that number. That's what God is trying to show us. Let's not worry about all of our warts and our zits, our scars and our wrinkles for a change. But see ourselves as God sees us. Not because of anything we've done or haven't done. God sees us as the bride because we are united to his one and only beloved Son. United in Christ. I hope these beautiful images of a wedding day, a new birth, a great recovery, and of a God who loves us more than any parent ever could, strengthens our faith for today and gives us bright hope for tomorrow. Now, how do we respond to this great love of God? Well, we love him in return, for starters. And we love our neighbors as we love ourselves. We keep calling on God day after day. We keep asking him to transform us more and more into the likeness of Christ. And in the power of the Holy Spirit, we will respond to the call as our song of response suggests. Come, open your heart. Show your mercy to all those in fear. We are called to be hope for the hopeless so all hatred and blindness will be no more. We are called to act with justice. We are called to love tenderly like our Father. We are called to serve one another, to walk humbly with our God. Those are some lyrics to our song of response that we will sing together after we watch this encouraging video from World Renew, who is celebrating her 60th anniversary. World Renew, their vision is our vision. World Renew envisions a world where people experience and extend Christ's compassion and live together in hope as God's community. 
as children of God, we will continue to partner with God himself who is making all things new and right and beautiful again by partnering with kingdom organizations like World Renew for 60 years and on into eternity. And all God's people say, amen. Let's watch this video together. Can someone get the back light or the front lights there? What's the key to ending poverty? It's not a simple question. But thanks to our friends and supporters in the Christian Reformed Church, World Renew has spent the last 60 years working to find an answer. Along the way, we've learned quite a lot. In places like Honduras, we're discovering the key to ending poverty rests with our children. And programming that supports not only the healthy birth of each baby, but also the nourishment of each child. Alejandra is one of those children. Her grandmother, Mayira, has partnered with World Renew for over a generation, starting with the birth of her own daughter 25 years ago. Today, Mayira serves as a community health volunteer, tending to the care of 190 children in her village. Part of Abuela Mayira's work includes helping 100 families in Nueva Suyapa to establish aquaponic gardens, a sustainable solution for a drought-ridden land. Using minimal water, these gardens bring vegetables, tilapia, and shrimp to the tables throughout Maeda's village, so families enjoy three nutrient-rich meals a day. Through Maeda's efforts, little girls like Alejandra enter school with healthy bodies and healthy minds, ready to learn, to dream, and to build a better life for themselves. The key to Honduras' future is Alejandra. The key to Alejandra thriving is Maira. And the key to Maira's success? Well, that's you. You and the other men and women throughout North America who believe in Maira and the hopeful work of World Renew. Work that is not just raising healthy children, but advocating for justice in places like Bangladesh, where the key to ending poverty is empowering women to make change. Like Mafusa, whose mother taught her to sew after learning herself in a class led through World Renew. Now Mafusa and her mother run a business together, sewing some of the most exquisite saris in Bangladesh and providing for three generations of their family. Because when women have the tools they need to change their own stories, they don't stop with themselves. They also bring change to their larger community. Like Fujima, a high schooler who partners with World Renew to advocate against childhood marriage. Many of Fujima's classmates have been taken out of school and forced to marry, till she and her friends decided it was time to change the story. Together, they now serve as elected representatives of their community, supporting women entrepreneurs and educating on the advantages of allowing girls to finish their education. Hundreds of parents have pledged to let their daughters finish school, thanks to Fujima's work. Mafusa and Fujima have found the key to ending poverty, and now they're opening doors for the women who follow after them. These women are empowered to make change through your support of World Renew. Support that is mobilizing women, not only in Bangladesh, but in Nigeria too. Here, Unvo Gyang is taking one small loan and using it to raise up her entire community. Several years ago, Unvo's husband was killed and her farm was stolen. In a single night, her family lost their home, income, and community. But the story doesn't end there. Through small business training, a village savings and loan program, and trauma healing with World Renew, Unvo and her four young sons were able to move through tragedy and begin life again. Thanks to one small loan from her village community, Unvo started a plantain business, and that business is now thriving. One small loan has sent Unvo's sons to school and empowered her to place money in savings. It has brought freedom from worry and a renewed sense of self-worth. Through one small loan, 
world renewed taught in Vaux that her community could provide the keys she needed to leave poverty. Now, she too holds the keys to ending poverty by helping other community members to access that same economic freedom with startup money for their own businesses. For Nvo, unlocking the potential in others is a calling God has placed on her life. And she discovered that calling thanks to love like yours. Love that creates a sustainable future for families. On the plains of Kenya, sustainability is uplifting families like the Ndungues and Chirindos. Before joining a food security program with World Renew, Elizabeth Ndungue and Happy Chirindo were two mothers confronting extreme poverty for their families. With drought and shifting climate patterns, their land couldn't produce enough crops to feed their children, let alone make a profit. For Elizabeth and her husband Peter, the stress not only meant struggling to find their next meal, but strain on their marriage and disconnection from their community. But thanks to World Renew's tools, training, and seeds, the Ndungues have produced enough crops to not only nourish their family and heal their marriage, but to grow a business. They've expanded their farm, built a house, and purchased a cow. A cow whose extra milk they sell to their neighbors, ensuring that other Kenyan families have the nutrients they need. Like the Chirindos, who also received World Renew's training and have now expanded the number of crops they can grow, amaranth, kale, okra, and tomatoes. The range of vegetables is good for the soil and good for Happy's children, now growing big and strong with energy to learn. The Ndungues and Chirindos are a few of many in Kenya who are leaving poverty for prosperity. They're a few of many discovering that the key to a better life depends on working together rather than trying to survive alone. As we seek to offer sustainable crops for families to thrive, we also work to offer safety and support to those facing disaster. Yet another key to confronting the challenge of poverty. Across the globe, people find themselves thrown into extreme poverty due to the emergency evacuations from homes destroyed by violence or natural disaster. People like Dalila in Lebanon. Dalila, her husband, and all seven of her children fled Syria for their lives due to the civil war. In Lebanon, Dalila's husband has barely earned enough money to cover rent. They struggle to feed their children. They struggle to begin again. But through a local partner, World Renew has walked alongside families like Dalila's as they rebuild. Delivering emergency resources over the last decade, World Renew has reached thousands of Syrian families with food vouchers, milk, and diapers for babies. During the pandemic, that work has also included vital health supplies to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Because of World Renew, families like Dalila's have found hope in a foreign land and World Renew is delivering hope to those closer to home as well. Texas is particularly prone to natural disasters. Year after year, forcing families to pick up the pieces of their shattered lives, often alone. And year after year, World Renew's Disaster Response Services volunteers show up with the materials needed to make homes dry, safe, and livable again. When a hurricane dropped a tree and four feet of water into Michelle's house, World Renew ensured Michelle could rebuild again, standing beside her nail by nail to restore her home. Because often, recovering from disaster takes the steady presence of a friend. There's not a single key to overcoming poverty. There's not an easy fix. Bringing an end to poverty takes all of us. The persistence of Maira, the skill of Mafusa, and the creativity of Fajima. It takes the courage and generosity of the Gaians, Ndungues, and Chirindos. It takes the fortitude of staff and volunteers around the world delivering hope. It takes 60 years of trust and relationship with local communities and it will certainly take 60 more. Looking to the future, we're honored to share this ongoing work with the Christian Reformed Church and other church communities. Your faithful support through prayer, funds, and service has already changed the story for generations. 
Thank you for becoming one of many keys to ending poverty. Nice to see some encouraging news for a change, eh? Please stand for our song of response in body or in spirit, we are called. Let's go to our God in a time of intercessory prayer. <clears throat> oh, compassionate God, we pray for vulnerable people all over this world. People without power who live in places of terror and violence, of fear and oppression. Protect them, God. As we sometimes feel so power, powerless ourselves to help them. Encourage and empower us to work for peace and freedom from fear in our own contexts. God of grace, we pray for those whose, whose lives have been turned upside down by various disasters, floods, fire and drought-driven famine. 
bring courage and hope to them. And through their pain, may they remain connected to you in fervent prayer. We pray, too, for those who say that there is no God. May we, through the living living of our own lives, demonstrate the joy and peace of a spirit-centered, spirit-filled existence. God in us. God of community, we pray for our own congregation. May we be a source of hope for our neighborhood and our city. Help us to discern needs and work to fulfill them. Strengthen and unify our church family and show us how we can be the disciples you envision us to be at this time and in this place. Father, we give you thanks for new life with the birth of Abel to Sarah and Kurt. May they and we raise our little ones to know the love of God that is found in Jesus. We thank you that Raymondson could get his work visa and begin work this week. Truly one of those life-changing moments. And Lord, we praise you for it. We give you thanks for milestone anniversaries like Sherp and Edna's 60th. As we reflected on already today, this milestone and others like them are beautiful pictures of the new heaven and new earth. Lord, on this Thanksgiving Day weekend, we have so much to be thankful for, even in the midst of our suffering and our pain. For family and friends, for work and pleasure, for peace and safety in life. And we recognize and we acknowledge that all good things come from you. Lord God, we are truly thankful for all you have done and continue to do in Christ Jesus. We thank you for organizations like World Renew. We thank you for this church. Receive our gifts, Lord. Bless them and multiply them for the sake of your kingdom and for your glorious name. And all God's people say, amen. Please stand in body or in spirit for God's parting blessing. This blessing is based on 2 Timothy chapter 1. As you go from here, may God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord give you grace, mercy, and peace. Do not let your faith or your witness grow cold. Remember, God's gift of faith is like a flame. When the embers of that flame have cooled, you must fan them again to keep them ablaze. So remember what you have been taught and what you have experienced. Live in such a way that all who know you may see the light of God reflected in you. And may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you and among you in all the days ahead. Amen.
asked everyone to send in some pictures of uh, creation or some vacation. And Aaron, do you have that video? Is that there? We'll have that. We'll play that video just before we leave. <laughs> 